Hello everyone, happy Friday. I hope you're doing well and I hope your October is off to a great start. I um, apologize for not being able to get you a devotional earlier this week. It was the most chaotic week I think I have had in six, seven months. So uh, every day was just jam packed to the gills with important things. And I promise you anytime I can make a devotional, I will. Um, it just wasn't in the cards for me to be able to make more than one this week. So thank you for the grace and the flexibility on that and just the busy, busy fall schedule that I know all pastors are experiencing right now. Tonight I want to talk about Romans chapter 5 and I want to talk about Romans chapter 5 in our devotional because that is what we talked about in our Bible study on Wednesday. Um, we have been doing a Sunday morning and Wednesday morning Bible study at church. Bob Emmerd, our education committee chair, has been leading that, and it has just been so wonderful to go through scripture and go through the book of Romans. And this past week, we covered Romans chapter 4 and 5. And chapter 5 is one of my favorite passages in all of scripture. And um, one of the aspects that Romans chapter 5 addresses is that Jesus was able to do what no one else could. Specifically, Jesus was able to do what Adam could not do. And we see that Paul really goes back to, you know, um, the Old Testament a lot and the book of Romans and He's doing that because he knows that the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians, but specifically the Jewish Christians, know exactly who he's talking about. And he kind of talks about these characters of, you know, importance and how they failed. They weren't able to follow the laws perfectly. They were not without sin. And Adam was one of the ones that... Um, Paul talks about in Romans chapter 5. So I'm just going to read it for us, the little passage, um, starting in verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and this way death spread to all people, because all sinned. In fact, sin was in the world before the law, but sin is not charged to a person's account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin in the likeness of Adam's transgression. He is a type of the coming one, but the gift is not like the trespass for if by the one man's trespass, the many died, how many more have the grace of God and the gift, which comes through the grace of one man, Jesus Christ overflowed to the many. And the gift is not like the one man's sin because from one sin came the judgment resulting in condemnation, but from many trespasses came the gift resulting in justification. If by one man's trespass death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? So then, as through one trespass there is condemnation for everyone, so also through one righteous act there is justification leading to life for everyone. For just as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so also through one man's obedience that many will be made righteous. The law came along to multiply the trespass, and when sin was multiplied, grace multiplied even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so grace will reign through righteousness, resulting in eternal life through Christ our Lord. I just love this passage so much. And it reminds us so much that Adam and Eve were the first humans that God gave blessing to, abundance to, joy to. They were um, given freedom to enjoy all in the Garden of Eden except one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything else they were able to enjoy except for that one tree, and God asked them not to eat of that tree, and so they were tempted they did it. Um, 
And this is just the most uh, perfect example of what Adam and Eve fell to was pride and arrogancy, um, the the desire to be like God or God's ourselves, self-sufficiency, our own ambition, um, all of those things resulted in them sinning. And God um, was looking for Adam and Eve in the garden. This is such a powerful part in Genesis where God had been walking with them and been in perfect communion with them. And um, after the sin happened in their disobedience, they realized they were naked and they had shame and they hid from God. So they had shame and they were ashamed. Um, and so this state of shame and death were the result of sin. And they tried every single thing they could do to cover their shame. They covered it with leaves and we still try everything we can to cover our shame. But nothing in all creation, not fig leaves or human effort, can reverse the brokenness that we experience as humans. We all fall short all humans. So Adam and Eve were the first to fall short in sin. Guess what? It was inevitable. That was just the way it was with, with free will and the gift of free will and the freedom of free will comes the reality that we are going to make mistakes. But because of God's grace and salvation, we no longer have to continue searching for those things that are going to cover us, for those things that are going to reconcile us to each other and to God. Um, just as all of creation has been running after for so long because of Jesus. So we see in Romans chapter five that Jesus is the gift of eternal life, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is in Jesus Christ. So because of Jesus's miraculous birth, obedient life, sacrificial death, and miraculous resurrection, our death sentence can and has been reversed. Our sin is covered, not with fig leaves, but our sin is covered as we are clothed in Christ's righteousness. Our shame is silenced. And we have been delivered from death through Jesus Christ. So through one man's obedience, many have been made righteous. So we are just so grateful for the gift of the good news of the gospel. Um, I know in such busy seasons, it is hard for all of us to accept grace from God, to accept grace from each other. Um, I feel especially in October, all of us are just kind of running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Um, but Jesus brings us redemption, reconciliation, and freedom from shame. And that is good news to me on the Friday afternoon when it has been such a chaotic week. And I pray that this is good news for you too. So blessings to all of you. Happy Friday. I hope to see you at church on Sunday, either in person or online. Talk to you later. Bye.